Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna be doing a fun tutorial about how to replace a sky or a background in Adobe Premiere Pro. So essentially, what we're doing is we're creating this right here. And now it might look normal, it might look a tiny bit off. That's just because Premiere Pro isn't, you know, the end all be all for this. But for quick clips, you can actually do something pretty fun. And you'll notice that this right here is the beginning footage, just a couple of people sitting on a beach. And then by the end, we've added some mountains, a little bit of overcast, uh, and then some blending in here to make it look like it's it could be part of it. And imagine if you just cut to this clip from here to here, and then that's how you use it. People won't have enough time to analyze it and find the differences, and it'll just feel like they're in that mountain sort of range where there's this almost this lake in front of them instead of this ocean. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get started on this effect. First things first, I'm just gonna go ahead and create ourselves a new sequence. Now, the first piece of footage that I drag in is going to be this piece of footage of these people sitting on a beach. I'm using this and then a mountain footage as well. I got both of these off of Envato Elements, a great place for stock footage. Uh, basically, you just pay a subscription and you can download an unlimited amount of high quality stock footage really awesome if you're doing like tutorial type things or if you just are always working on productions you need this stuff so often that it's really awesome just be able to search a library and be like yep i want this one download it and get started so these two pieces are off of that so the first one we have here you'll notice that we have a bit of a problem and that is that the camera is moving for this effect to work in premiere pro what we need is we need a line something that we can sort of cut out and put it behind. If we want to do something where we are actually keying the people out, like if this person's head was over the horizon, that takes basically After Effects. You're gonna to have to do keying, you're gonna to have to do frame by frame. We're trying to do it a quick way. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to stabilize this footage and make it like a tripod. So if your footage isn't like a tripod, it just has a little bit of movement, we can fix that. We're gonna drop this down to five seconds just to give us a little bit less of working room. We don't want it to be analyzing way too much footage. We just want what footage we're using to be analyzed. We're gonna go into our effects. We're gonna look for an effect called Warp Stabilizer. It's under Video Effects, Distort Warp Stabilizer. We're gonna go ahead and take that and drop it on right here. And it's gonna begin analyzing the footage. This can take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, depending on the footage. It depends on how long this will take. So I'll come back once this is done. You can already see it's actually almost done. Once your footage is fully done, it will say stabilizing and then you'll get this footage. Now, what we don't, we don't want it to be this smooth motion. It's basically gonna take out all the shakes. We want it to be no motion. And when we click no motion, it's gonna stabilize it again. It's gonna zoom it in a bit, but no motion makes it so it looks like it's on a tripod. And this is what we were going for. Now we have the ability to do our background replacement here. It's like it's filmed on a tripod and that's exactly what we need. So our next step, now we need to add in our mountainscape. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna grab this mountain uh, footage, right like so. I'm just gonna delete the audio off the back here and then I'm going to go ahead and hide it real quick. We wanna click on our mountain footage and we want to cut it out. So we wanna cut it into this box up here. To do that, we need to draw a mask. So make sure the mountain footage is selected, effect controls over to opacity, and then we're going to click on either, if it's perfectly straight, you can use this, or uh, you can also free draw it. I'm gonna go ahead and free draw, and when I click on this, it's going to give me this tool right here, and you'll notice that I can't go any higher up here, and I need to get up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to fit 25%, and now I have space to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a point maybe right about here create another point right off this edge, about here, and then just go up and finish off the box. And now what I've done is I've created a mask. So now when we turn on this top footage, you're gonna see that the mountains are up here and then the ocean is on the bottom. We're gonna fit this back. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bit of feather here. However, we also want to adjust the mountains. As you see right here, we wouldn't be seeing the peaks of the mountains, we'd be seeing the base of the mountain. If we try to grab the position and move that, it's just going to move the entire piece, so we don't want that. What we wanna do is go into effects, and we're gonna look for an effect called transform. It's under video effects, distort, transform. Drop that onto our mountain footage, and what this is gonna do is it's going to move it in the background and keep that, uh, that mask going. So we wanna pick a spot probably near the base right down here. That's gonna be the best place to put this so it looks the most natural. You could bring it up a little bit too. Depending on how you blend it, it can look, basically it can work with a whole bunch of different things. So we're gonna put it right about here. 
Now, we're gonna go back up here and we're gonna feather this out a bit. What we wanna do is we want to create a little bit of uh, basically blending between the two. And when we put it up here, you're gonna also notice that we're kinda getting that sharp line again. And so we don't wanna do this too much. We wanna just give it just enough that it blends the two together in a slightly reasonable manner. And if we need to, we can also take this and we can sort of adjust this downwards just a touch to sort of put it over that line more. And I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna bring it down just a touch more. And now that blending line is just a little bit more natural. Now, of course, right now, it still doesn't look too realistic. First thing we need to do is we need to correct this footage. You'll notice it's very blue here. Well, this is sort of a warmer color. So to do that, we kind of just need to eyeball it. We're gonna click on the mountain footage. We're gonna go over to Lumetri Color. You can click the color workspace or you can actually go into effects and look for Lumetri uh, Color and then drag and drop that on the footage and do it over here. Wherever you do it is fine. We just need to take this temperature and we're gonna bring in just a touch more warmth here. Just something to match sort of these whites. That's what we're trying to do is sort of eyeball these whites to match them just a little bit more. And this is a very subtle change. You'll notice, but it's going to make it all sort of look like it's in the same footage here. We also may wanna bring up the exposure just a bit. There's sort of some whites that are being blown out here, so we kinda of might wanna match those together. Again, this is eyeballing it. We're just gonna keep moving things around until it looks good, until it looks like it might be a little bit more in the scene. And right there, I feel like it's looking already a bit better. Our next step, we want to go ahead and we're gonna add some mist. We wanna make this look far away. We wanna add a something to cover up this line right here. So we're gonna go over into our project, we're gonna click new, and then we're gonna look for the color mat. It's going to automatically make one for the sequence that we currently have selected, that's okay. And then we wanna to go to a color. Now, we can make the mist any color we want. And the other one, the example I showed you, I made it a blue mist, but in this one, let's go ahead and make it a little bit of a yellow mist because maybe there's a warmth here that we want to replicate. So if we go ahead and go down to the white, we wanna make this yellow right here, and we wanna to go to the bottom left and then move it over just a bit so you have a tiny bit of that yellow in there. Then click OK, click OK on the mat, drag and drop that over. And now you'll see we have this yellowish mat on the top. We're going to hide that just for a bit so we can work on the bottom here. We're going to click on the opacity, click a box, and make sure your color mat is selected when you do all this. You're gonna see the box right here. I'm gonna drag it over to the, the left, and we wanna basically just bring this up, and we're gonna to try to put a box right over this horizon. And maybe, like so, maybe we wanna bring it up just to sort of, because we're gonna feather this, so we don't want it to go over their heads too much. We're then going to take the footage, turn it back on, you'll see that we have this just basically yellow rectangle. We're gonna take the feather, we're going to increase that a bit, and now we already have that mist going. We wanna bring the opacity down a touch, just so there's a tiny bit of mist. We don't want a ton of mist here. So maybe bring the feather back in a bit, sort of grab this, and now that's looking good, but we have this big space up here that isn't yellow. So we want the, the mist to sort of go stronger as we go up. To do that, we're just going to duplicate this, so hold the Alt key and drag it up, and we're gonna get another one of these. We're gonna grab that position, we're gonna move this position up, and then maybe grab the mask itself, go to 25%, and just make it a little bit bigger so that it covers the top up here. And then we will zoom back in, go back to fit, and now what we're looking at is, it's looking like a pretty good mist here, maybe a little bit on the strong side. So maybe we take this bottom one, we bring the bottom one down, and then take the top one and bring it down just a little bit above that, so about 46 right there. And play that back, and that's looking a bit more natural. We can always play with this more, we can bring it you know, way down, maybe we just want a tiny mist here. So instead of the 40s, we could go to the about 15, maybe a little bit more on the base, maybe a little bit more on the top. It's all about these tiny adjustments until it feels right. And right here, we're already getting a better feeling of this. Now, we have this really sharp line here. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna try to maybe add a little bit more feather here to sort of try to fix that sharp line a bit. It's gonna be kind of hard with the bottom of the footage, but overall, again, we're just trying to mimic a little bit. We're not trying to force this 
and make it look perfect. This is for a short scene, this is a Premiere Pro, we're not in After Effects. We're trying to just replace the background in the best way that we can. So our final step here is we're going to add a bit of blur onto the mountain. And the reason we're going to do this is because the mountain right now is too crisp. It's too clear for what we're working with. If we go and set this to full, you'll see that the mountain looks just as clear as the sand right here, but it's really far away. So if the focus is here, it's going to be blurry even just by a little bit. Gonna go into effects, gonna look for camera blur. Gonna gr click on that camera blur right there under video effects, blur and sharpen, and drop that onto the mountain. And then we're going to go down here and 25% is way too much. We want maybe 1%. And if we click the 1% through, you're gonna see it adds just a tiny blur to it. If you look at the edges here, get this big so we can really look at the the change here. Look at like the edges right about there. You see it just blurs everything just a little bit, makes it look like it's in the background more and focuses our eyes down here, which is supposed to be what the, you know, maybe some friends are, are looking at their environment. We want the, to look at the friends. We don't wanna focus on the effect. So now we have our effect created. This effect, once you have the blur, it's going to be hard to play the footage back. You're going to get basically choppiness or nothing. Uh, to get to play it back, you'll see that there's this red bar. All you have to do is click the enter key on your keyboard and it'll automatically begin rendering this bar out so that we can view it. So I'm gonna click that so we can watch. So now we have finished the encoding. You'll see that we have the green bar right here. So we can go ahead and play back and take a look at this. And you'll see we have the final product right here. A pretty good sky replacement that you could do in Premiere Pro as long as you got tripod footage. You can build this, you could add different ones, you could add multiple of these, you could put a city back here. There's so much that you can do with this as long as you have that horizon and your characters are in not interrupting that horizon. Another thing that we could potentially do with this as well is you'll see that this is in a bit of slow motion. So we could actually grab this footage and slow these clouds down to fit this better as well. It's all about trying to figure out how to fit the background into the foreground and make it believable. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you wanna see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and subscribe button. I make a video every other day, or at least I try to, on all sorts of Adobe related products. Until next time guys, see ya.